Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at the endtimenews.org and today is May 20th, 2013. According to Syrian rebels, dozens hurt in another chemical weapons attack in Damascus. Forces loyal to President Bashar Assad used chemical weapons laced mortars in a Damascus neighborhood Saturday, injuring dozens, the Syrian Observer for Human Rights claimed. Dozens of people were being treated for respiratory difficulties following the attack, according to reports carried by the Saudi-owned Al Arabia TV channel. The channel also reiterated reports by the BBC Thursday that the chemical weapons were used in Seraquib in Idlib province on April 29th. Two helicopters dropped devices on the town, which is located southwest of Aleppo as it came under bombardment from regime forces, the report said. Adding new details to the reports of that Seraquib attack, doctors at a local hospital said that they treated eight people who had breathing problems or constricted pupils. One woman, Maryam Khatib, died of her injuries while her son Mohammed was injured when he rushed to attend to her. A doctor who treated Katib said her symptoms were similar to poisoning caused by organophosphates, ingredients used in nerve gas and insecticides. Syrian offensive in Qazir deepens. The Syrian military continued its offensive on Qazir amid reports that at least 13 Hezbollah fighters helping the army in the strategic attack have been killed so far. Syrian media, state media said army units pushed deeper into the town near the Lebanese border on Monday and were fighting street battles with the rebels. The Santa News Agency said that President Bashar al-Assad's troops took control of most of the town of Qasir on Monday. Opposition activists said at least 52 people were killed on Sunday. At least 13 Hezbollah fighters were also killed, they said. In another article, Debkafal stated that this was a major victory. Iranian arms for Hezbollah can now go through from Syria to destination unobstructed. To stop them, Israel would be reduced to simultaneous strikes against Syria and Lebanon. Syria has aimed its considerable ballistic missile arsenal at Israel's heavily populated Greater Tel Aviv area according to Middle East sources cited by London's Sunday Times. According to the report, the regime of embattled Syrian dictator Bashar Assad will launch the missiles at Israel should the Jewish state carry out one more aerial strike inside of Syria. Earlier this month, two military facilities in Damascus were purportedly preparing to transfer advanced weapons to Lebanon's Hezbollah terrorist militia, were suddenly destroyed in pinpoint aerial strikes. At Sunday's cabinet meeting, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the latest threats out of Syria will not deter the Jewish state from doing what must be done to protect its people in the long run. Meanwhile, an Israeli military patrol on the Golan came under fire early Monday near the Tel Hazaka position from the Syrian side. As in the case of the mortar shelling on Mount Hermon Saturday, fire was not returned, according to Debkafal. This appears to be in keeping with a new Israeli policy of restraint against Syria, which military sources predict will generate escalated attacks from the Syrian side. At least 43 dead and dozens wounded as string of bombings hit Iraq. A series of bombings across Iraq has left at least 43 people dead. The blast targeted Shia Muslims in Baghdad and Basra. Nine people were killed in one of two car bombs in Basra, a predominantly Shia city southeast of Baghdad. I was on duty when a powerful blast shook the ground, a local police officer told Reuters. The blast hit a group of day laborers gathering near a sandwich coist, he said. One of the dead bodies was still grabbing a blood-soaked sandwich in his hand. Five other people were killed in a second blast inside a bus terminal in Sa'ad Square, also in Basra, police and medics said. In Baghdad, a parked car exploded in a busy market. The blast occurred in a mainly Shia district of Kamalia, 
Seven people were killed in the attack. A further 22 people were killed in blasts in Elam, Dayala Bridge, El Shurta, Shula, and Sadar City, all areas with high concentrations of Shia. Egyptian army sends tanks to the Sinai after kidnappings. Egypt's army sent reinforcements into the Sinai Peninsula on Monday after President Mohamed Morsi said there would be no talks with militant Islamists who have abducted seven members of the security forces. A military official said the decisions followed a meeting between the military leadership and Morsi, who said he will not submit to blackmail by the kidnappers, who are demanding the release of militant Islamists jailed over attacks in 2011. The kidnappings has highlighted the lawlessness in the peninsula and enraged security forces who have blocked border crossings into Israel and the Gaza Strip to pressure the government into helping free their colleagues. Presidential spokesman Omar Amir said, All options are on the table to free the kidnapped soldiers. Witnesses saw armored personnel carriers moving east over the Suez Canal towards the North Sinai area where militants staged last week's abduction and where gunmen attacked a police base on Monday. The state-run El Aram newspaper said on its website that shipping in the Suez Canal had been briefly halted as the reinforcements crossed the waterway. Our patience has run out, Al Aram quoted a military official as saying in its printed edition. North Korea fires sixth missile in three days. North Korea has fired two more short-range missiles into waters off eastern coasts, making six launches in three days. South Korea's defense ministry said North Korea fired one missile on Monday morning and another in the afternoon into the East Sea also called the Sea of Japan. The latest launches followed three on Saturday and one Sunday, despite calls for restraint from South Korea and, and other countries in the region, as well as the United Nations. Pyongyang on Monday rejected criticism of the missile exercise, saying that military training is the indisputable right of any sovereign nation. North Korea routinely test fires short-range missiles into coastal waters. But the latest launches, which analysts say may have included rockets from a new multiple launcher, come at a time of heightened north-south tensions. Since March, Pyongyang has repeatedly threatened to attack South Korea and threatened the United States with nuclear strikes. The United States, Russia, and the United Nations have all issued renewed calls for restraint from North Korea. A spokesperson for the South Korea's Unification Ministry called the latest weapons test a deplorable provocation. The book of Revelation tells us about a time when no one will be able to buy or sell anything unless they have the mark of the beast. That system is supposed to be in effect during the Great Tribulation period when the Antichrist and his false prophet will be in power over most nations of the world. The false prophet will deceive the people of the earth and cause them to worship the image of the beast and to receive the mark of the beast. So if in fact we are living in the last days, then there should be some evidence of the mark of the beast system either in action or in the process of being set up. And there is. But first, let me read to you what John says about the false prophet and the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that, even make, he, that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast whose wound was, who, who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many 
as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom that him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. What kind of a system could possibly exist where people wouldn't be able to buy or sell unless they were a part of it? Well, with today's technology, the answer is simple enough. A cashless digital society one where all transactions are done digitally by moving numbers around from one computer database to another. For example, when you purchase groceries from the store and you use your credit slash debit card, the funds are transferred from your bank account to the grocer's bank account. Although at the present time, cash is still acceptable, however, at some point in the not too distant future, it will not be. But again, if in fact we are living in the last days just prior to the implementation of the mark of the beast, there should be some evidence of it. The other day I ran across an article, which as far as I'm concerned verifies the fact that we are indeed living in the last days, and that the mark of the beast is just around the corner. I'll read some of the article to you. It was recently announced at the World Economic Forum in Cape Town, South Africa, that MasterCard and the Nigerian National Identity Management Commission under the government of Nigeria would form a partnership to distribute a new identity card to every Nigerian citizen. The purpose of the card is to have all Nigerian citizens participate in the financial services sector under the control of MasterCard, a multinational financial services corporation headquartered in New York. MasterCard's press release, MasterCard to Power Nigerian Identity Card Program. It stated, As part of the program, in its first phase, Nigerians 16 years and older and all residents in the country for more than two years will get the new multi-purpose identity card, which has 13 applications including MasterCard's prepaid, prepaid payment technology that will provide cardholders with safety, convenience, and reliability of electronic payments. This will have a significant and positive impact on the lives of these Nigerians who have not previously had access to financial services. The program is also designed to move Nigeria into a cashless society, one that is dependent on financial institutions, Wall Street, and the Nigerian government. It will be managed by the financial elites of Wall Street, technocrats, and of course, Washington. All forms of financial transaction would be exchanged through plastic credit and debit cards that would have implanted RFID chips. Maibach, president of the Middle East and African Division at MasterCard, supports the Nigerian government's decision for a new cashless society. Today's announcement is the first phase of an unprecedented project in terms of scale and scope for Nigeria, said Maibach. MasterCard has been a firm supporter of the Central Bank of Nigeria's cashless policy as we share a vision of a world beyond cash. The author of this article goes on to say, the problem with a cashless society is that the state can terminate your electronic financial lifeline if anything were to happen within the country. For example, any form of protest, economic downturns, a war, or if a financial institution such as MasterCard were to go bankrupt. He goes on, when you have a powerful financial institution issuing payments electronically with a government that is supported and controlled by Washington, unlimited control of the populace becomes inevitable. And he will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, 
and that no one may buy or sell except he who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Friends, we are heading into a cashless society, a system where individuals will be identified and based on government whims will either have access to or be denied partic participation in the economy. Revelation 13 is a prophecy written some 2,000 years ago and refers to that final period of time before the return of Jesus Christ. So if this prophecy is coming true in our day, then it is also evidence that we are living in the last days. All the signs are pointing to the fact that time is getting short. You can ignore it, laugh at it, joke about it, simply refuse to believe it, but it will not change the facts. The Mark of the Beast, the Battle of Armageddon, the Return of Jesus Christ, and Judgment Day are all coming down the road full speed ahead and will all take place within our lifetime. Are you saved? Follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation with a sincere heart and you will be saved. May God bless you. <laughs>